where he escaped and for five days committed a series of different crimes until he was finally apprehended. He told the judge he had no remorse for his crimes whatsoever. Wow, no conscience. So in 1983, when Richard was serving 16 years for another crime he had done, officials were in the process of changing laws due to overcrowding in the prisons and were releasing prisoners after they served only half their sentence. And guess what? R Richard Allen Davis had already served eight years of his 16 years, meaning he was eligible for early release. And against his probation officer's advice, he was released. And three months later, he abducted Polly. And I'm sure you'll all agree that if the government had dealt with the overcrowded prison system properly, instead of releasing convicts into society with Davis's history, Polly would still be alive. Yeah, like, get rid of the idiots that got busted for selling pot three times. Exactly. Like, they don't need to be in jail. But no, they're going to let... Fuckers like yeah. that. So Polly's case had led to many positive changes. Even the so it was something bad, it did have some positive outcomes for other people. Her father had created the Class Kids Foundation, and this foundation helps parents of abducted and missing children. And it's all because of Polly. Officers can now see all criminal activity when they run someone's driver's license, too. And not only can they see the driving violations, they can see all criminal activity, which we now know would have changed the outcome of this case. Additionally, the three strikes law was created and basically means any defendant convicted of a felony that already has a prior conviction of a felony will be sentenced to prison for twice the term otherwise provided for the crime, and if a defendant is convicted of any felony with two or more prior strikes, the law-mandated prison term would be at least 25 years to life. However, there was an addendum made, which I, I'm sorry I never got to look at in 2012, so I'm not sure what happened there. It probably changed, like, the type of felony. Probably. So he had already been convicted of a massive amount of felony charges, and if this law was already... In play, he would have been tucked away in prison and wouldn't have had the opportunity to kill pa Polly or anyone else for that matter. Yeah, because if he killed her, who else did he kill? Yeah, exactly. You don't know. There could have been other people. Because he's a, obviously a fucking liar. Mm -hmm. So thankfully, this case was solved, but unfortunately, it did not have the outcome everyone was hoping for. Polly's parents went on to do so much to change how missing persons and abduction cases were solved. For instance, Amber Hagerman, she was a nine-year-old that was kidnapped while riding her bike in Texas and brutally murdered. After Amber's death, Congress, there was a congressman, Martin Frost, with the help of Mark Class, drafted the Amber Hagerman Child Protect the Law, which is the Amber Alert. Um, and it was enacted during President Clinton's run. That is such, like, an amazing... Like, I remember I was in Vegas, and we were in the middle of the show, and everybody's cell phones were going off because they had an Amber Alert for a missing child in yep. Vegas. I think that's great. Another really positive outcome was the police radio system was upgraded, so all police channels uh, are sent through a centralized 911 system, so there's no chance of them being on the wrong channel. Right. And although Richard... Alan Davis was sentenced to death 25 years ago. He's now 67 and sitting on death row still in San Quentin State Prison. He And, well, this is a, a bright thing. He allegedly had been attacked by several prisoners and overdosed. He sadly survived and is currently in solitary confinement, which he's probably all fucked up in his head now. Let's hope. So this is one of the parts that really pissed me off. I would think the whole thing put Yeah, I would say this off. is like a pretty downer of a story. <laughs> so in June 2009, the California Supreme Court upheld Davis's death sentence because he and his lawyer, lawyer, he and his lawyer argued that his jailhouse confession was 
unadmissible in court because it was given without an attorney president present. The court ruled it was justified, and his lawyer told reporters he intended to ask for a rehearing. And I'm not sure if that's entirely true, but um, I heard par I heard the reason for it being upheld was because, according to what I heard on the internet, Mark was asked to go meet with Governor Newsom. Mm -hmm. On a Tuesday afternoon, he was told by the illustrious governor in no uncertain terms there would be no execution during his administration. Mark said he felt like he had died a little bit when he heard that. I would too. This motherfucker is sitting up there getting three hots and a cot, yep. cable TV, yep. AC. He must have felt like blindsided. And then the very next day, Newsom signed an order on execution stating that the death penalty is ineffective irreversible and immoral and i can't help but wonder if it's about money since california spent um five billion dollars and only executed 13 well that's the thing and then you're still feeding him you you know what i mean like you're still giving him health care it's not about money no and that's but th you know what they're making it seem like it is so you know the death penalty it's kind of a sensitive topic on both sides you can you can debate oh both yeah both sides have have valid points and not everybody that commits a crime like and i know it doesn't deter people from committing no. their crimes but but maybe if they used it more maybe it would well in this case why i, I don't know i'm more like it should be eye for an eye like you should That's what get I that same punishment so the family had their child taken away from them in a, the most heinous ways possible 28 years ago it's been 25 since this child's killer was sentenced, and yet he's still breathing. It's fucked up. I can't... I'm sorry, it kind of ended kind of abruptly there. But, can you imagine? I love this... I will actually, so, I hate the ones where they're like, oh, he just like died of a heart attack like two weeks into jail. I know. I'm glad he got his ass beat. Stay... Stay alive long enough to suffer. Right, because like I said, he's getting three hots and a cot. He might, yeah, he like might be fucked up because he was fucked up long before oh, death yeah. row. He, and I'm not like I said in that. It's not like you're trying to blame your past on your actions now, but sometimes it does have a lot of outcome. Like it kind of sets the stage for what kind of human you're going to be. Well, there was a lot but, of red flags. But you can't you can't also say. Um, I was abused as a child, and that's why I'm a rapist or a murderer or whatever. You know what? Get over yourself. You might have had a shitty childhood, but, you know, you have to strive to try to make yourself a better person. Right. You know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, be a big boy, and be a successful human being. Or, hey, parents, maybe have gotten him a therapist when he was lighting kittens on fire. This is a sick person, huh? And I can't believe I'm going to post him on Facebook and everything, too, when this episode, when we air it. But he's at, he's literally on court cam, giving the finger, middle finger to the camera. I, well, don't, I don't, oh, don't worry. My next story, there's there's justice. And I, it's, it's how it, they should all go. That's what has to happen. I know. I know. I shouldn't say this, but sometimes vigilante justice, baby. Look at Dexter. Dexter was the shit. <laughs> <laughs> he goes a little bit farther than I would go, but... Hey, he took out rough. only the bad guys. Yeah, no, but then he caught him up, so... Because... You... That's too messy. Yeah, but no, then they forget about them. But he had me. He figured it out. But we did want to congratulate our winner of the book, Wendy... So we will get Wendy her own, very own copy of Crazy Is as Crazy Does Yay, the Life of a Serial Killer. Looking forward mm -hmm. to seeing if she. I hope she lets us know how she liked it. I know. So we'll get that out to her here soon, and then next week we will choose another winner. I want to win. Me too. We I already won. <laughs> why am I saying I want to win? I already did get a book. We already have books. It's still fun so, to win things. All right. Well, is that it for today, Cal? That was a long one. It was a long one. What the fuck?
I Sorry, I, I got wound up in there. I'm out here for the view. I apologize for my salty language. That wasn't even salty. That was that was over salty. I, it wasn't salty enough, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time. Bye. Oh, we never did that. <laughs>